we can see inside this arch vaulted room in the exterior wall. This is the beginning of tape 17 at the Kala and uh, prison. Standing on the north wall that's reconstructed of the fort, looking down on one of those churches. It's interesting, it's obviously not used, but it has beautiful columns in the inside. Hopefully they're restoring it, and hopefully that's what that work there is, is to get access to it. And swinging to the right, somewhere down in the midst of these trees should be that second little church. Of course, there's the river and that beautiful mosque that we've seen yesterday. We're now looking at pretty much Old Town on both sides of the river. Where this came from is anybody's guess. I'm sure this inscription means something to someone who's knowledgeable. Panning across the river and in a block past one minaret there, but there beneath us is the Hammam that to some degree is being restored, I think. And I think that's the monastery or the mosque that was closed to access, although I was able to go in and sit on a bench. And, and from this vantage point, I counted just a moment ago 25 minarets, and I'm sure I'm missing some like the squatting one I saw yesterday. And yet, churches, only a few. What I note also is that any time I've been at a mosque um, and querulously looked like I wanted to go in, someone would come up to me and say, you can go in, you can go in. And I said to the man yesterday with my gesture, can I go in with shorts? He says, go on, go on, go in. And then he kind of like nudged me in and then he followed and did his prayer thing. These are the ports that we saw, or the vaults that we saw on the north end facing the city. And I think the usual entrance here is straight ahead. Okay, inside this vault we get a better feeling of how things worked. Here was the shooting port. Looks like there were two levels to it, which is interesting. It looks wide enough only to shoot at something that's literally outside that window, looking in, because you can't get close enough to it. It's almost three feet from the edge of the interior edge to the exterior edge, so you can't get too far uh, in to see down, or even shoot down for that matter. There are two ports inside this large vault. And here we have an explanation for those smaller vault, uh, vaults. They are the passageway between the series of uh, vaults. And here is interesting. Now here, this one was probably for cannon, whereas that one there is for just for shooting a rifle. But here you can see that it's concave. The wall is much thinner and it's designed to give us a better uh, firing view, probably for a cannon that was mounted right here. You can imagine what a hub of activity this would be if, in fact, it was under fire. It's interesting to notice how dissimilar the arcs are of these vaults. This one is long and flat, this one short and tall, I mean uh, tall but narrow in width, that one about higher than the other, probably medium width, that one almost looking like a circle, unlike the Romans who were very precise. Interestingly enough, two vaulted rooms that are above an arched entryway, whether that was an original entryway, I don't know. It is lower than the other series we were just looking at. Um, this wall is all reconstructed, so I don't know how much of this is authentic either in design or in, in, uh, in stone. Um, certainly those lintels are strange. They're cattywampus. 
there's a double lintel there that one's flat this one seems to have a round arch to it but very flat one here's the same inconsistency of design or what appears to be the same inconsistency this restored wall of course has the benefit of providing a magnificent uh, backdrop to the town when you're down below and that's perhaps its primary civic function. Now at the southeast corner I would guess even though it's a reconstructed wall that probably this is the original thickness of the wall that the exterior portion uh, is a very thick defensive wall and then rooms were built into this interior side whether it actually looked like this originally, I don't know. Certainly there's evidence there of rooms tiered on tier. Inside that corner, here we can see the thickness of the exterior wall, the size of the interior <coughs> vaulted rooms that are reached by those doorways that we saw. Again, how much of this is a total reconstruct, I have no idea. But I think much of what we're looking at on the exterior part is, I mean on the interior part is, this part all over here. Here you can see what I think is probably an original exterior, and then from there on it was restored. This water bubbling up as well as that uh, modern water system that we apparently saw early on suggests that this place had one or more pretty substantial wells which would be critical. Some of this looks like it might be original, like those cannon firing ports. And hopefully they maintain some archaeological integrity. It's like they're building this, rebuilding this road up here <clears throat> to give the properties that have been abandoned new life. I don't know if I can scoot through that narrow opening, but I'm going to try. No, I'm not. It's about as close as you can get. A little detail we can get on the church as we walk down. these paving stones you may be able to see that they're offset so that they're uh, on the upper end they're raised up a little bit providing the traction to get up the hill. I wonder if it's actually better than cement. There's that other church but it's probably walled in like the other one is. An idea of the steepness of this hill. Many of the houses up here are abandoned but not all. And completely restored if not built. Fresh. The old like this <clears throat> will best be ripped out and replaced like these men are doing with brand new stuff there. I've just visited the tomb of uh, Jesus, Babis. Chat with this gentleman right here. He is responsible for um, restoring the inside of this building, and he opened it up to show me. It's a very simple building. It it is a splinter, I guess you would call it, of uh, of the Muslim faith, uh, in that they don't uh, use mosque, but they use this, which is I think a talk or something like that. I'll have to find out more about it. But anyway, um, this is the people buried in here are in fact his grandfather uh, and his, uh, I don't know if it's his father, but his great grandfather, but several people. But he is a member of the family, the lineage continues, and he is now responsible for restoring the inside and the outside, uh, including uh, a very nice wooden roof on the inside. And so presumably, these folks that are buried here also are related to him. But a very nice fellow, he spoke very good English. Where he learned it, I don't know. We talked about religion and uh, other things that 
uh, I have come here to expressly learn about, i.e. the Muslim faith and the culture, not the faith in depth, but the spirit of the faith in the people on a day-to-day -day basis that I'm capable of actually observing, even though in most instances I don't have the opportunity to uh, chat with a man like that who speaks good English. Here, a local dentist's office. And there he's working on his patient. In a very nice office it looks like, right near the river, very pretty, nicely done. Here's a multi-spout old fountain. And when I say fountain, I mean really a well where people come to get water. And those probably are old fixtures, changed when necessary. Near the Ottoman Bridge, I'm sure redone, restored, etc., etc., many, many times. It's interesting to look at and wonder about the different design elements, like here, a relatively small arch, but it probably never had initially this uh, little patio down below, but then the half arch, why just a half an arch? The uh, rosettes, if you will, those two small holes. Then here a full arch, and then a full arch next to it, a big one, that seems normal. But also it's at a different elevation, the top of it, than the one at the far right. That uh, defensive device there for the bridge itself is probably relatively new.